is Paul Warm. I'm joined today by Henry Moon, that's out in Morgan. Uh, Ron Dossenbach is sitting next to me with Michael Sewell, with Karen uh, Price, and with Ben Schinkel. And, uh, and Dave Burke, uh, Dave, uh, Dave Burkholder is behind the camera during the recording. Uh, you're listening to the organ here at uh, St. Cecilia Academy, and you're going to hear a little bit more about that from Henry. Uh, so Henry, come back and join us, and we will uh, we'll start our, our, uh, our chat together. So we are we are in Windsor, and uh, we are representing not only Windsor but Essex County. Uh, this is the southernmost part of Canada, and oftentimes it's a little the least known part of Canada because we are down here in the southwest of Ontario. We are, in fact, the, the southernmost part of Canada, uh, including Windsor and the county. There are about 500,000 people in our area. Most of our people live in the rural counties. Uh, we have a rich agriculture. Uh, we have uh, mostly, as I said, rural churches. Uh, but we do have some fine instruments here in, 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 in Windsor as well. Uh, we have a wonderful climate here. Uh, it's uh, the same climate as on as North California, and that means we have good wineries. In fact, we have 18 wineries within 30 minutes of drive, and uh, we are very proud of our, our wine uh, industry in this part of the country. Um, we're on a peninsula, and we're surrounded by water and live on the land originally inhabited by indigenous peoples who have traveled this area since time immemorial. The territories with the lands honored by the wampum treaties and the allied nations uh, and we are, are committed to peacefully care for and take care of the resources in this part of the country surrounded by the Great Lakes. Now we originally started back in the 1980s when David Palmer, who is well known to all of you in the RCCO, started the very, very first youth RCCO center back in the 80s. And that was mostly for his organ students at University Students. Uh, many of them are notable Canadian organists even today, and uh, with his leadership and under the leadership of Judy Boutin, we've, uh, we've had a number of students that have gone on to become fine organists uh, across our country. As with many centers, we are facing similar challenges uh, in terms of maintaining and growing our membership, and we have a unique opportunity here in that we, have, we are in close proximity to the United States. Um, the Detroit, just across the border, has a very impressive arts culture with many fine organs and opportunities and, and challenges. In fact, just as a piece of trivia, most of us, when we travel to the States, when we travel south to the United States, we actually have to travel north to get to Detroit. Um, we have a number of cross-border challenges, but opportunities, and we'd be curious to know about other centers across the country who have a cross-border relationship with the American Guild of Organists. Um, while we all are unique in, in many ways, uh, we are also facing similar challenges and opportunities, and through the means of this video, we hope to share with other centers, and we hope to have an ongoing dialogue and sharing of resources across the country. So having said that, I'm going to hand over the, uh, the video to a number of our, our members here. We'll start with Karen Price, who is our, our, our membership chairperson. And Karen's going to talk a little bit about our membership. Yes, as Paul said, we are like other centers. We are always looking for new members. Um, and it's a challenge to find them. But our current members are very, very loyal. Um, and we keep in touch as a family center. So, um, we keep in touch by telephone, make sure that people are doing well, and um, we are very proud of our membership. Gary does a great job of staying in touch with all our members and making sure that we know when people need our support and our encouragement. So uh, we do take very, we take seriously our, our role in, in sharing and caring for our, our membership. We've, uh, over the years, had a number of uh, very interesting programs. And Ben Schinkel, I think, Ben, you were one of our founding members, were you not? Back how many years ago was that? Well, I think it's about 37 years ago. I'm not sure, but I was already here. I remember when we had our, uh, 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 
how you call that, um, um, convention. Yes, we had a convention. A convention, yes. and that's about 35 years ago. So, and then I was already a member, and then I became a chairman for a couple of times, and now I've been the uh, um, treasurer for 25 years. And Ben keeps a very good a close eye on our, our finances, but he's, he's seen a lot of our programs over the years, and uh, some of our programs have been uh, around youth. We had an international youth day. Um, we had over 30 people involved in that activity. Um, we've, uh, we've, we, were, we had a very successful uh, organ playing competition, record setting competition a number of years ago. Um, we've participated in Doors Open Windsor. We've participated uh, uh, in uh, working with Elder College, which I'm sure Henry will talk about a little bit. But our, our activities over the years have been similar to what other centers are doing, uh, pedals, pipes, and pizza, pipe organ encounters. Uh, we, we, we have a number of activities that we share with our members in centers across the country. Um, we also have a very, very unique service here in Windsor-Essex, and that's uh, provided to us by our, our organ advisor, uh, and that is Ron Dossenbach, who's sitting here, and, and Ron's going to tell us a little bit about the role that he plays in our, in our center. Ron? As a pipe organ tuner and technician, I kind of have a different uh, inside view of, into the organs in the area, and what's been a real source of the satisfaction to me is the history that several of our organs have and the connection they have with not necessarily just the organ itself. We have a historical instrument in a, one of the oldest churches in Ontario. Uh, we have one of the uh, organs, uh, Opus uh, 17 of Kazavant was installed in a nearby church. Uh, there was a uh, prohibition entrepreneur that had the only pipe organ, player pipe organ in his home, the only one in Ontario this side of Hamilton. And uh, that went in the 40s into a funeral home. And uh, that is in perfect working order. And that is a, that's a delight. Uh, and so what we offer is uh, kind of a, uh, uh, anyway, when I joined the, the, uh, the board, uh, Paul asked me if I would mind being a, an organ advisor as a portfolio title. And so I'm happily able to give first person, uh, first response uh, uh, advice to churches and organists that may have questions about their maintenance and their tuning and even about different instruments. And so that is a, a nice way to connect and offer <coughs> service to the, to the area. Thank you, Ron. Uh, it's a, it's a unique service that Ron provides, and I know all of us have benefited from his, his knowledge, his skills, and his expertise. Um, but also, I think that's a service we, all, we can offer to the community, in particular the, uh, the uh, churches uh, in our area that are facing challenges with, with maintenance, but also replacement and ongoing use of the organ. Um, so it's a service that we are we're very proud of. Um, Henry Boone is our uh, scholarship chairperson, but he has also a unique uh, uh, past and uh, has brought us many opportunities. And I'm, I'm going to ask Henry to talk about some of our educational opportunities and some of our affiliations as well. So, Henry, over, over to you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, the three students we were fortunate to have last year, Martin, Andrew, and Evan, have left us to pursue studies in universities and cities away from Windsor. So currently we have no students taking advantage of our scholarship program. The Windsor Essex chapter of the RCCO is fortunate to have established a connection with the Academy Senseo International School where we are currently holding our executive meeting. The founder and director, Ms. Therese Goduri, has given her endorsement to our chapter for hosting events that the RCCO organizes. One example of an activity held in the Great Hall was the organ playing record setting event in 22, 2022, which was highly successful in no small part because of the beautiful venue the Academy offers. To make this engaging collaboration work, our chapter of the RCCO 
looks after the maintenance of the organ in the Great Hall, as well as the organ in a beautiful chapel, which is part of the school. The possibilities that are available to us through the connection with the Academy Saint Cecile are considerable. Organ recitals with guest organists, scholarship student auditions, student recitals, uh, pedal pipes and pizza events, and an organ demonstration that may include students from the Academy. We hope in the future to establish a curriculum with the school that will offer students a course in liturgical music with a focus on organ music that will prepare students for a directorship in a church setting. So to conclude, the Rancher Escher chapter of the RCC was fortunate to have established this collaborative relationship with the Academy, which hopefully will be beneficial to both parties. And we're currently sitting in the uh, in the Grand Hall at the St. Cecilia Academy, and this is the uh, wonderful organ that we have access to, uh, to use, to teach from, uh, to listen to. Uh, it's a resource that uh, we're very proud of, and we're looking forward to growing our relationship with the Academy. We also have had a good relationship with Elder College, which is a part of Canterbury College at the University of Windsor. Elder College allows us and has facilitated us doing a number of pipe organ encounters for uh, seniors. Um, we've had some very successful events with Elder College and we, uh, we pride ourselves in that relationship. We also are developing a relationship with the School of Creative Arts um, in Windsor, uh, associated with the University of Windsor, of course. Um, for example, last spring we hosted a Bach walk and we did, uh, we re, uh, re, uh, retraced the steps of Bach when he went on his journey to, to, to study uh, organ. Um, we uh, traveled between two churches in, in, in the city. Uh, we listened to some of Bach's early works at one church and Bach's later works at another church. And then we traveled to the University, the School of Creative Arts, where we were uh, entertained and, and uh, and heard some of the uh, some of Bach's uh, chorales and some of Bach's pieces written for for, for voice. Uh, so that was a collaboration that we were we were happy to have. Um, so we, we're fortunate in that way. We have a number of affiliations that we're proud of. Um, we um, we uh, as with uh, as with all centers, we uh, we have a uh, as with most centers, we have a website. Uh, we communicate to our members through a newsletter. We also have uh, e-communications on a regular basis, which we call uh, quarter, quarter notes, 30 second notes. We have quarter notes as our newsletter, 30 second notes are our, our uh, notices that we send out to all of our members. Um, we are we're well organized and we're kept in line by our very, very uh, efficient secretary, Michael, who's sitting here. Uh, Michael's been our, our, our very, very, hard-working uh, secretary for many years now. We're really, we're really uh, obliged to him for his, his ability to keep us organized. Mike, do you want to say just a couple words about what we do as a, as a committee and how we meet? Okay, the, uh, the center usually has a membership list on the order, I'd say, between 20 and 24 people. And of those, right now, eight are actually on the committee. It's... Uh, Meeting once a month is a time where we can get together. Usually, usually about a two-hour meeting, so get a bit of business done and have a bit of conversation with what's going on in the area. In addition to monthly meetings, there's occasionally unscheduled or emergency meetings if there's an event coming up, something that needs to be addressed. And uh, everyone pretty well works together. There's no one. You know, no one person. It's, it's certainly a team effort. Uh, one thing I would mention: one of the people on the exact is a, a member who is our chaplain, uh, Robert Clifford, who's not here today, but uh, it uh, gives us a direct uh, connection where we can have spiritual advice or have uh, an insight into what's going on in the churches. And, uh, he's got being a, being a minister. He's got. A, connection with other uh, churches and other ministers, so 
if we want to hold an event or if you want to uh, find out what's going on or who needs help, he's there for us. There's not really too much more to say. My main function, of course, is just writing the minutes and making sure that everything's uh, kept on record. And he does a good job of keeping us in track. Um, thank you for mentioning also about chaplaincy. In 2018, uh, our centre made the decision through our annual meeting to reinstate the position of chaplain on our executive. Um, for for the re many of the reasons that, that Michael talked about, that we have, uh, uh, we have access to someone who can provide support and counselling as needed to our members, but also uh, provides us a foray into the uh, the, uh, the church community. Um, that, that, of course, is one of our main stakeholders, and uh, we are very, very fortunate that Robert uh, is also a very keen musician and very, very supportive of uh, music in the, in the liturgical sense. But also, Robert's function is to ensure that we adhere to our to the to the to the uh, to the safeguarding policies and the code of ethics. Uh, and the rules and regulations that, uh, that ensure that we are we are providing services that are both sound but also safe and secure for all of, all of our members and all of our stakeholders. Um, as I said at the beginning, we uh, we are similar in many ways to other centers in the in the RCCO. Uh, we have unique uh, characteristics, uh, but we also share a number of the challenges. And I'm hoping that through this video and through sharing the video with other centers and hearing other centers' videos focusing on their work that we're able to develop and maintain an ongoing dialogue and uh, sharing of information and resources across the country. Uh, we are, we're very open and we're very welcoming to comments and we, we welcome uh, any feedback that you care to give us. And anytime you want to win, with, visit us in, uh, in uh, Windsor, Essex and hear some of our fine music will ensure that you are treated to some of the wonderful wines that we, we produce in this county as well. So thank you for listening to us about the Windsor Essex Center. Uh, we're, we're very happy to, uh, to share with you a little bit of insight into who we are and we look forward to hearing about other centers and the work that's being done across, across Canada in the Royal Canadian College of, of Organists. Thank you.